Hey everyone, I'm back on YouTube. I know it's been a few months since my last post, so I have a lot to talk about, but before we get into it, let's cue some B-roll. Like I said, it's been a while. I figured I'd start out with a few life updates. First off, I'm engaged. Very excited to be marrying Cami. I proposed back in July and we're getting married in May. Just can't wait. Second, I started a full-time job shortly after graduating. I'm a brand journalist, so I'm kind of a content writer, content creator. I do a mix of video, photography, writing, graphic design, and social media. It's basically all of the things that I studied in college and I'm very grateful that I found a job doing what I enjoy. So when I started this channel I was a student freelancing, working campus jobs and taking a full course load. I'm really glad all those things paid off and I moved to a new city so that's been very interesting. So that's about it for the life updates. Uh, we can move into talking about some photography now. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I really enjoy macro photography. So I thought it might be cool to go through my top five macro shots and explain a little bit about each one of them. So we're gonna do that. First up is this branches shot. I actually captured this during a vlog video, which you can go see. I'll put the link in the description. This was shot at f11, 1 1 60th of a second exposure. I really enjoy all of the different branches emphasizing the depth of field in this shot. Next is this caterpillar. This was shot at a very wide aperture within two inches of the caterpillar. And I have to say this isn't my most liked macro shot on Instagram, but it is my favorite that I've posted. I just love the depth of field, love the contrast of the white and black against the neutral brown leaves and rock that it's sitting on. Third is this grasshopper shot. I was surprised by how still this grasshopper stayed. What you can't tell by the picture is that it was windy that day and it was a challenge to actually keep the grasshopper in focus using a manual lens. The flower that it's sitting on was swaying back and forth in the wind. Next up is this slightly creepy spider shot. I have to say I really hate spiders and uh, getting within a couple inches of this big guy was a little nerve-wracking. You can see the detail in the spider's hairs as well as the web that it's sitting on and I was fortunate enough to have this shot featured on the Columbus Visuals page so a big shout out to them for that and they've actually featured a couple of my photos. And then finally my most liked macro shot on Instagram. These orange flowers that were growing out of a railing at a park down the street. I captioned this photo beauty is in the detail because these were very tiny flowers and if I hadn't had my eye out for some interesting macro compositions I would not have noticed them. There's something almost ethereal or alien like in the way that these little tube shaped flowers are sprouting out of this wooden fence piece. It looks pretty surprising and um, it's not something that you would see unless you're really looking close and I think that's really what macro photography is all about. It's noticing those little details that you wouldn't see on a regular basis. So with the exception of that last shot, all of these macro photos were captured using this lens. If you've followed my other videos, you're probably sick of hearing about this lens by now, but it's absolutely my favorite lens for macro photography. It's not actually a macro lens, it's a Canon FL 50mm 1.4, commonly used as a portrait lens. It's from the 1960s, so it's a vintage lens, and I adapt it to my Lumix G7 mirrorless micro four thirds camera. Using this in combination with a macro tube will yield some pretty amazing results because of its wide aperture and really sharp optics. It actually allows you to achieve a greater depth of field than a lot of macro lenses on the market right now. So that's about it for this video, guys. I do want to give a quick shout out to Nikki Purington, Nicole Purington Photography for taking these excellent engagement photos of myself and Cami. If you're in the market to get some portraits done, definitely go check her page out. Follow me on social media. I post weekly on Instagram and I'm starting to use Twitter again, so follow me there. Thanks again for watching and I'm really interested in knowing what questions you guys have. Send me some questions either in the comments below, reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I'd like to know what you guys are interested in seeing and what topics you'd like to hear me talk about.